Red light, green light. A popular childhood game, a universal symbol of when to stop and when to go. And to me, what became a tool in my search for perfection and a subsequent barrier in my journey towards self-expression. I entered the world of dance at age five. At the time, it really wasn't anything serious as our biannual recitals merely gave parents the opportunity to document their little ones dressed up in tiny tutus as they paraded about the stage, performing lackluster choreography. The owner of the dance program was an uptight and curmudgeonly old man possessing what seemed to be a perpetual scowl, one that not only pushed me to keep dancing, but urged me to fit each frilly costume and sequined leotard. So much of the studio's emphasis was on the visual and aesthetic aspects of performance. It was all sparkle and no substance, thus fostering my false association with art and physical beauty. I was given access to technology at a fairly early age. With an abundance of information at my fingertips, I began my descent from innocence into the unregulated world of diet culture. I found an app, Kerbo, that served as a sort of Weight Watchers equivalent for children. Foods were subsequently labeled red lights, yellow lights, and green lights, dictating my diet and inculcating my impressionable mind with thoughts of restriction and insecurity. Fruits, vegetables, and lean proteins filled the green light category, telling children to go right ahead. Whole grains and dairy received yellow light classifications, warning children to slow down and watch their portions. For red light foods, including sugary drinks and other classic childhood staples like Lunchables, goldfish, fruit roll-ups, etc., the platform encouraged children to slow down and think, not so subtly suggesting that cravings should be suppressed. Now, entering my food intake for the day satisfied me. I felt as though I was achieving something, although at that age I could not have told you what I was doing it all for. Each week, I allotted myself three red lights. If I knew I had a birthday party that week, I understood that cake was a non-negotiable and I would need to save a red light for the occasion. This strict adherence to green light foods and a hyper-awareness of health transformed my diet into a transaction. Where others saw a lively little girl cartwheeling everywhere she went, I could only see the little girl that needed to gain control over her sweet tooth. Now, I hadn't considered myself to be overweight until I faced the Wii Fit board in my basement. I'll paint the picture. In 2007, gaming designer Yohei Miyagawa was tasked with designing sound effects for Nintendo's new Xer gaming platform Wii Fit. Three sounds were subsequently added to the game's weigh-in screen, entitled on the soundtrack, BMI Too Thin, BMI Very Fat, and BMI Too Fat. Now, we can all agree that the concept of this game is wildly destructive, especially for young people. But at the time, it was incredibly popular, selling over a quarter of a million copies in its first week. I had a music box when I was much younger with a tiny ballerina on the inside. A mechanical representation of the beauty and grace that I strived for. Where I had once been free to twirl about the dance studio, I was now confronted by my own reflection, one that did not mirror my music box muse. I wanted to look the part of a real dancer, failing to see that strength and grit were the true markers of a ballerina. I stopped dancing right around when my growing body stopped looking cutesy and adorable in each superfluously embellished ensemble. Now, in my time away, I felt the same restriction I had forced into my diet. Not only was I refusing to fuel my body properly, but I was also beginning to exercise past capacity plaguing my mind with a constant fog, clouding my judgment, and eroding at essential pieces of my personality. I became a shell of myself, and people were starting to see it. Now, at this time, I was desperate to find something that could provide me with the same release, an ineffable liberation from the banal and routine. I knew that if I were to return, I would need to go back with a new mindset. So I did just that, beginning to remind myself how dancing had made me feel. This appreciation for what the body can do, rather than what it looks like, is known as body neutrality. But I would go as far as to say that adopting this frame of mind has allowed me to find empowerment and confidence. Once I was able to find value in the minutia of dance training, understanding how each muscle contributes to the dancer as a whole, the rest followed. I now look forward to slicking my hair back in a high bun and layering my leotards with tights and skirts for Tuesday and Thursday ballet. Today, I stand at the bar. I face the mirror, high on my releve, maintaining my balance and fighting for the strength it takes to position my body in ways that appear unnatural to most. 
I've come to terms with the occasional intrusive thought, instead choosing to focus my energy on trusting my body and validating its capabilities. This freedom has not only bettered my dancing, but it has slowly, slowly but surely mended my relationship with food, allowing me to understand food as fuel and give myself the green light. Thank you. <laughs>